Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Day Hut. In today's hopefully short video, we're just going to get the Raspberry Pi Pico from its purchase state to its ready state. And that's uh, not really all that involved. We just need to get some header pins soldered onto the Raspberry Pi Pico board uh, so that we can attach wires and so forth for sensors and LEDs and all the cool stuff we're going to do with it. And then we also need to load in uh, the uh, UF2 file, which is the interpreter, if you will, uh, that allows us to run uh, Python, or more specifically, MicroPython programs on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, as the Pico comes from uh, the manufacturer, there are no header pins. These are header pins. Um, and we need to get them on there so that, as mentioned, we can get wires attached to it. Now, most of the time, you will solder header pins onto the bottom of the board, this surface being the top. The bottom has no components. Uh, so you'd have the long end projecting down, the short end coming up through the holes in the board. Sometimes you will want to uh, solder header pins onto the top of the Raspberry Pi, depending on your uh, choice of mounting, certain uh, attachments you may put on here, etc. So it can either be the bottom or the top. You have to plan that out in advance. One of the best devices to use for soldering the pins on, as a jig if you will, is to use a breadboard. And what we will do we will take our header pin. I'm just going to put part of it on Raspberry Pi, like so. And I'll break it off right there. And then I will get the other half on there, like so. Then we will line that up on the breadboard. So now, as you can see, we got the breadboard, we've got the header pins in there, short end up, and now it's just a matter of soldering all the pins in, all 40 of them. Hopefully you have the skill and a soldering iron and the proper equipment to do this with. Uh, if not, I would highly recommend, uh, if you're going to be playing with electronics, that you get yourself a nice soldering iron and... Uh, have the tools necessary uh, to do your job or to do uh, your activity and uh, if it's a good one it'll make it much more enjoyable. So it's just a matter of applying a little bit of heat on the pins and on the board and then I just take the solder, put it against the pin and it just draws in. You'll notice that I'm uh, jumping around the board uh, that way I don't have to worry about damaging my breadboard by uh, having the header pin draw too much heat down onto the plastic of it. If I move around, it has a chance to cool down. Now, for those of you that have a good eye, you'll see that I just had a bridged solder joint right here. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Um, so I'm going to fix that up with my solder sucker. I'm just going to heat it up and suck off the excess. And then because that sucks off almost the so all the solder, I need to re-solder those two pins and clean them up a little bit. I guess that should teach me to pay attention to soldering and not chatting. Now at this point, this is what it should look like. You should have good shiny solder joints. Uh oh, not like that. Uh, you should have good solder joints that are shiny on each pin and it should be fully uh, encapsulated. Not the whole pin like a big blob, but uh, going from the pin to the board uh, where that hole is, it should be completely filled a nice fillet. At this point we're ready to load in the UF2 file uh, which will allow us to actually utilize um, the Raspberry Pi Pico with the Python programming language. What we're going to do next is set up the programming environment 
uh, for the Raspberry Pi Pico using uh, a program called Phony or Thony. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. Um, but what it is, it's an entry-level editor for programming in Python, but it has special features built in it uh, to work with the Raspberry Pi Pico. But first, let's get it installed. Uh, here you can see I'm on a website for Thani, and uh, the links for all these websites uh, will be included in the description below. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll download it. I've been through this a number of times, so you'll see it here uh, listed as number two. Uh, like all programs, we'll open it. We'll start the installation process after opening it. And I'm just going with the defaults. No need to do anything special. I will create a desktop icon. And this only takes a few seconds. After expanding all the data, it'll then go through and compile the standard uh, library. And that only takes a few more seconds. So we'll finish, and we'll go ahead and run Thani. And it comes up right away with an alarm that it can't find uh, uh, the device. Uh, that's because uh, here is my USB uh, cable coming from the computer. and. Uh, uh, the, here's the Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll find the device once we connect it. But first I want to show you, um, down here in the bottom right corner, if that doesn't say MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico, you'll have to click on it and then uh, select that from the list of available options. Now, the way this was installed, it seems to somehow magically know I'm going to be using it for uh, MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Otherwise, there would be several other options there as well. So, that got us to that point, and uh, we're good for right now. Uh, we've got our editor installed, and we're ready to start using it. But we've got another step we got to do, and uh, that requires going around to a few more websites gathering data. Now we'll want to take a look at the Raspberry Pi documentation. Again, I'll have a link in the description below. And uh, there's three areas here that are of, to me, the greatest importance. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico information. So we'll just click in there. It's going to talk about the RP2040 microcontroller. That is this device here on the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's the actual microcontroller. The rest of this is just a breakout board so we can access those tiny itty bitty pins all the way around it. Uh, so we've got some general information here. Uh, you'll definitely always want to have a copy of this diagram as I do here on my workbench. Uh, always have that handy. Makes programming and, and use so much better. You can download it as an individual file. Uh, here you've got some uh, design files that are always handy if you're doing layout or fritzing diagrams. And then uh, some uh, data sheets on the hardware, the actual chip uh, that is uh, the microcontroller. And then the Pico data sheet. Um, if you're going to play with uh, C++, you would want to uh, go into this chapter, but if you're just new to this, and sticking with MicroPython, you can bypass that altogether. I would recommend downloading this file. It could be very handy. I've got it in my uh, 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 library that I, I access. Uh, here's the data sheet for the RP2040, and then the Pico P uh, Python, Pico Python <laughs> Software Developer Kit, which is this document, and then, of course, uh, the manual here. And I'll get up to the front so you can see. Here's your uh, the cover of the the manual that I'm going to be referencing in a moment. Um, we'll go back down. Uh, pretty much this stuff you can kind of read at at leisure. Uh, we're going to talk about this UF2 file in the next uh, website or next document area, um, so we can get that a little bit later. But get those documents, have them handy, and put them in a library so you got access to them. Uh, 
we'll go back a page. We're going to come over to MicroPython. This is the programming language. Here's some information about it. I also have uh, links to the uh, documentation for it, MicroPython, and I'm looking at 1.18. And then I've got a couple of links within this document that talk about um, uh, quick reference information for the Pico. And uh, then we're going to look a little bit into, or you'll have available to you, the machine library. And that's the really key one. Uh, this is how MicroPython is tailored specifically to the Raspberry Pi Pico. I know it's, I'm covering a lot here. Hopefully you got some time. You can go to each of these websites, read through it, and get familiar. Um, but we get back to here. Um, here are the, the libraries and so forth that we were discussing. Um, but right here is where we're going to start with getting things, uh, the MicroPython interpreter loaded onto the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, so we would download this file. I've already done that. Uh, it's down here in my downloads. So I will copy that over to a directory uh, and then we'll pick up uh, once, once we get over there. Okay, picking up, I've put that file, the UF2 file, into my Pico Workshop folder uh, and then in the subdirectory UF2 file. So I'm going to have a couple of those in there by the end of this video. Now that we're back on the website um, and we've downloaded this file, we're going to press and hold uh, the boot select button and then plug in the Pico into the USB port of your Raspberry Pi Pico and then release the boot select button after your Pico is connected. So just for clarity, this is the boot select button. And we're only going to do this process once unless we're going to load in a different UF2 file. Um, so realistically, we do this once and this Pico is good to go forever. So we will do this process. We'll hold down the button. I'm going to plug in the cable. That will open up the uh, directory for the Pico. It's a mass storage device at the moment. Now, if you want, you can also click here, and that will take you to a website, uh, which we'll do. And that takes us to this website, which we've already been to. What we want to do now is drag and drop the UF2 file into that volume, and then the uh, Pico will reboot. So we'll close all this down. Back to our screen with the uh, Raspberry Pi directory uh, for the Pico. I'm going to take my UF2 file, drag and drop it here. First, now what I'm going to do is hit a stop. And that'll restart the background. And uh, we've got MicroPython version 1.18 running on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So now what we could do is start programming the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now it's important to point out we only do this process once when we install the UF2 file. If we want to replace the UF2 file, perhaps it's an upgrade or another uh, version of the UF2 file, we would then repeat this process of holding that down, plugging the cable in. Uh, but other than that, from this point forward, you don't really use that button. The next thing that I want to talk about before we get into writing our first MicroPython program is that sometimes manufacturers such as Pi Moroni will create their own version of a um, UF2 file. Now I've uh, been experimenting with a lot of their products. Uh, this Pico Display, I'll show you one of those here. Uh, this is a clock that I use to help synchronize all my cameras that are recording everything at the same time here. There's about four things all being recorded, and this is how I synchronize them. That is the Pico uh, display. Underneath here is a Raspberry Pi Pico in there, and I've just got a, a little uh, power pack that I run it off of. Started up at the beginning of filming, and it runs forever. Uh, but in order to use that, I can't do that with the Raspberry Pi's standard UF2 file. Uh, 
here is the custom one for Pi Moroni. And uh, that is a great one uh, to also collect if you're going to be following along in this video series where I'm going to be covering several of uh, uh, Pi Moroni's products. Uh, but just as you, the process would be the same, just download it uh, from their uh, GitHub site. And uh, then we would copy that uh, into our folder, etc., and then load it just as we did uh, with the other one. Um, I don't really need to go through that. It's the exact same process, um, but I am just going to download it and then uh, get it in my folder for later reference. Now, I would also like to mention I've got my file copied over here. This is my UF2 file from Pymeroni, and they would have additional libraries to make programming some of their accessories much easier. So hopefully, at this point, you are now able to see this message down below and you're connected with your Raspberry Pi Pico, your USB cable, and we're ready to start writing a program. First program we're going to do, and it'll be very, very simple, we are going to turn on this tiny little LED right here. Turn it on and uh, leave it on for a couple of seconds and then turn it off and then from there we'll call it ready. Here's our quick little program. Uh, we're going to import the machine library, and the machine library helps uh, MicroPython to be able to speak directly to uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico and all of its pins and hardware uh, peripherals and etc. Uh, we're going to import uh, UTime, MicroTime, that's the MicroPython version of the time module you'd find normally in Python. Here we're going to create an object by instantiating a machine.pin. We're going to use pin 25, which is the pin number for the LED on the circuit board. And we're going to set that up as an output, because uh, we're going to be telling that LED to turn on and off. To turn the LED on, we set its value to 1. That means on. We'll sleep for 5 seconds, and then we'll turn the LED off. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to hit the run button and nothing's been saved onto this Pico yet. It's still uh, brand spanking new with the exception of the UF2 file. So I'll hit run and it's going to say where to save to. I can either save this program somewhere locally on this computer, this Windows computer, or I want to put it into the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is where I really need it in order to run. So I'll do that. I'm going to give it a name led.py and don't forget the dot py. If you don't put that in there, it kind of confuses Tani, Tani as to how the editor should behave because uh, it'll consider it some other type of file. As soon as I did that, the program started running and we saw the light come on and then go off. We'll repeat that. I'm going to hit the Run Current Script again. And that pretty much wraps up how to set up and configure your Raspberry Pi Pico uh, for use in, uh, in programming and so forth. Now I will go back and address one more thing because it's a question that keeps coming up for a lot of people because uh, they think they've got to do this installing the UF2 file or the boot select button thing over and over again. Uh, let me just demonstrate to you uh, how this works and uh, we'll, we'll explain it. So first off, here on this uh, you'll see me unplug the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now at this point, of course, if there was anything in RAM it would be off, it's dead, etc. So I'm going to plug this back in And on the computer here, we will see it says use stop restart to restart the Pico. We'll do that. And I'm going to close the open program. All right. Now I'm going to say open. Now I'm going to actually have two LED programs on the, on the uh, Pico. Here's the one that I just demonstrated. And then I saved as a copy of that uh, by using file save as. Now I can put a bunch of programs in here and uh, pick and choose which ones I want to run through the 
uh, Fanian uh, environment here. So let's say we're going to run that one. OK. And when I hit this button, we'll see it run. And if I uh, unplug it, again, I can select those programs off of it and continue to run uh, any which program that's stored on there. So this pretty well wraps up uh, the setting up and configuring the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, we've gone through over here, um, we've attached headers to the Pico so that we can easily work with it on a breadboard or connect pins and wires and all kinds of cool things to it. Uh, we learned about uh, the boot select button. We only really need to do that once. Uh, this is the actual RP2040 chip, the microcontroller. The rest of this is supporting hardware and uh, gives us access to the pins, which are those tiny little legs you see around there. At the computer, I walked you through a number of websites, uh, especially the uh, Thani website, Raspberry Pi website, and where to get documents off of there and which ones are important. Um, a book that you should download. Uh, it's a very, very valuable resource um, where you can download it for free. And again, these links are all in the uh, description below. Uh, one of the reference diagrams that you should print and always have handy. And then the MicroPython uh, documentation page, which is just a tremendous value uh, with reference to all the different uh, functionality of uh, MicroPython, and then specifically with the machine library, how that relates to the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've also pointed out that certain manufacturers might create their own custom UF2 file, and then they might have their own example programs or their own libraries to run their specific devices. So with that, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. I probably ran a lot longer, like I usually do, than I would hope to. Um, but nonetheless, this is the beginning of a whole series of videos that I'll be producing over the uh, coming months regarding the Raspberry Pi Pico. We're going to be discussing an awful lot of detail about every aspect that I can think of to connect devices to uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, from very simple things like a switch and an LED, but taking that very simple input or output and then extrapolating that out into something that's far more useful, such as adding behavior to switches rather than just simply on or off. Uh, adding uh, how to communicate a code with a basic simple LED. A lot of cool uh, code examples will be following with each one of these uh, videos coming up in the near future. Well, I'd like to thank you for spending time with me today. Hopefully you picked up a few things and hopefully you're going to investigate further and explore further with the Raspberry Pi Pico. I find it an absolutely amazing device. It's been a lot of fun working with it and in typical Raspberry Pi uh, methodology, so to speak, it's rock solid. It's a very good, strong product and uh, it's just great to work with. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I certainly would appreciate it. It certainly helps us uh, to grow the channel, which will help secure its existence in the future, and helps uh, the financial support through subscriptions, which costs you nothing, but it does get us uh, more viewers, which gets us more advertising dollars, which hopefully at some point I'll have enough to actually buy a, a Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Hope to see you next time.